You know, I don't know why it is, but lately God is uh, asking me to make some very difficult podcasts. And this is the most difficult one I've made by far in a year. But I'm, I'm going to record it and I'm going to listen to it. And if I believe that I have 100% said what our creator wants us to hear, then I'm going to publish it. And if not, I'll be the only one who hears this. So if you're hearing it, I guess that worked. <laughs> I want to talk to the guys tonight. Maybe some of you women, but, but mostly the guys. This is important. This is really, really important. Porn has destroyed us as men. Porn has destroyed us. And we could sit around all day, complain about feminism, destroying things, and play the victim card, right, as men, which is easy and tempting to do. But we have to look at ourselves and see what we're doing and why and how that's affecting not only potentially a relationship that we're already in, but if if we're single and alone, how that's affecting your chances of ever being with somebody that you can genuinely love and appreciate. I, I can't imagine today in the last year what porn has turned into. I don't know. In my life, I've been fortunate enough to be pretty shielded um, from that world. And it's not that I've never watched it. Of course I have. I've, I've come across it and at times in my life have, have indulged in it. But uh, fortunately, it's never become a vice. It's never become a regular part of my life. And, and I know that's, that's not the case for a lot of men because it's so easy to access now at any given time for free on your phone or whatever you want to do. It's just right there. And it sure is a heck of a lot more challenging, or I'm sorry, it sure is a, a heck of a lot less challenging than trying to, I don't know, for example, say seduce your wife or your girlfriend or go out and meet somebody and, and start a relationship and and uh, within a normal course of time eventually have sex, right? The porn is like the immediate answer. You can, you can just pull up at any time, get that immediate satisfaction and, uh, and move on. And that's how it starts. And what God has been showing me in the last few days I had one conversation with with somebody about this a few days ago, and um, it made me understand and realize really how fully and, and deeply this problem has been impacting not only men, but women. So we'll take the first scenario, and we'll say you're single and you're alone. And you haven't been with anybody for a year, maybe two, you haven't dated. And in that time, you started to watch porn and, and more porn and more porn for, for that part of, of your life. And, of course, you start out watching things that are normal sex, if you want to say that, you know, to other people. To begin with, that's, that's just when you think about what sex was created for and and uh, and what it's really meant for in a relationship, you know, to, to watch two other people do that, uh, it's, it's just really a sick thing. But, um, but that aside, uh, that's where it starts. And it starts like that. <laughs> and as time goes on, it seems like uh, you don't get as much stimulation, right, from just watching that. And so you have to go a little bit deeper. And now maybe you're watching two women and a man or, you know, things like that. And then eventually that just doesn't feed you enough anymore either. And the next thing you know, you've, you've gone into some dark places that, 
that you never imagined you might have you might go in and you might be there right now and I think there's probably more of you that are um, that aren't in this world because it's a lonely world right now um, and the problem with all of that if we allow ourselves if we allow that that monkey that ape on our backs um, it just keeps growing and growing and growing and getting heavier and heavier and heavier and as that happens eventually you're no longer able to be stimulated by a woman a real woman just a woman in face in face to face in person because your brain has been ruined by the images that you've taken in and I remember reading I don't know 25 or 30 years ago I read somewhere where it was explaining how the images in, in pornography, especially recorded pornography, are ingrained in your brain, in, in your memory, uh, exponentially more than other memories, than other things you take in because of the intensity of it, because of the chemicals that get released in your brain, because it's, it's, it's as though uh, you are having sex yourself, right? And so it releases certain chemicals in your brain that uh that are conducive to as though you were actually doing that and and feeling feeling those feelings of love towards somebody but it's just it's toward a screen um and it just gets to the point and i know a lot of men will will know because i've heard this said many times it gets to the point where it's just like one woman that i can't it just doesn't do anything for me. I, I can't even perform. You know, it, it's not arousing enough. It's because of all that damage you've done to your brain through the years. Now, that's healable. It's healable. Know that. It truly is. It's a spiritual thing. That big ape on, that's a spiritual battle that you're in. It's a stronghold. And only the Spirit of God, the power of God, can destroy that stronghold and break you out of it right but see it's taken away all of our power i remember i think it was mike tyson maybe i don't know some 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 big time boxer uh years and years ago and and i was listening to an interview with him maybe a vander holyfield i think it was a vander holyfield that's who it was and he, he had an interview years ago and he said that uh, you know, back in the 90s when he was a big deal. And in the interview, he said that his trainer would not allow him to have sex or masturbate for a month before a bout, before a, a fighting bout, you know, his boxer. And and there's a reason for that. He said, uh, you lose your legs. You literally lose your legs. And, and, and it, what that really means, lose your legs, just means you lose your strength, you lose your power, you lose your, your drive, your, your vigor, your, your desire for, for life and women. You know, you lose your desire. We're built for that. We, as a man, like you're built automatically to love women and appreciate women. But, but when you start having a, a, an affair with your screen, it, it becomes your relationship. And how does it make you feel when you're done? You know, how many times have you said, I'm just done with that. I'm not doing that anymore. Like any other addiction, like gambling or alcohol or drugs. Only this one, I think, in a lot of ways affects more areas of your life because, uh, because of the things that are in your head now and because of the images that you can't get out or replace or because of the fact that you no longer have a desire to pursue a relationship with a real woman because... It's just you don't you don't literally don't have the drive. You don't have the desire because you're you're just <laughs> you're ruining it all for nothing. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with masturbation, okay, obviously. But I'm saying when it becomes a lifestyle, a part of an addiction, a part of who you are, and you find that your relationships are suffering because you'd rather do that. Um it's a big problem and women know it women you know I don't think they know what's going on or why what's causing it but 
women are, are saying more and more, uh, where did our men go? Where did they go? <laughs> they, they've stopped chasing us. They've stopped wanting us. And, and now we've put women in a position to start chasing us. And that's the worst position to be in. You don't want a woman chasing you. It's not how it works. Unless you're, you just want power, you know, over her. But that's not a relationship. That's a dictatorship. So, um, but women, women see this and, and they're confused. And not, not only that, but, um, you know, just with the laziness in general and, and just with the, the, uh, the complete inability or, or, or lack of desire to fight this agenda that's been going on for the last year and just sitting there complacent we're men we have a job to do and it's to protect our women and they may act like they don't want it they may act like they don't need it but deep down they do they know they do and They'll just never tell you that because I guess they've gotten to a point in a lot of cases where they've just given up and they're like, well, okay, we just got to do it now. Our, our men are gone. And it's not the only time in history that this has happened. I, I talked about it in, an, in a video the other day, back in the 1800s and early 1900s, where, where the men, the, the women lost all their men to alcohol for, for 50, 60 years, if not longer, because men just started becoming drunks and drinking all day and when things went from drinking beer all day to drinking whiskey all day, um, all of society fell down and it ended up leading toward uh, to, to prohibition. And, and so women had lost their men back then and they didn't know what to do. But back then, they did a, a, something a little different than they did this time. Like back then, they didn't want to take power away from the men. They just wanted their men back. They thought their men were still redeemable. Back then. And now... It's like they've given up. They've given up on us. They really have. Of course, I'm, I'm talking as a collective. I'm not saying your wife has given up on you in particular. I'm saying as a collective, women have given up on men. And, and, and I think we need to take a lot of blame in that. We need to take a lot of blame into letting feminism happen. And granted, I mean, I'm 44 and it started, you know, when I was a baby, but... Uh, but it, it was a, a slow progressive thing that happened through history through the last 40 or 50 years. And what did we ever do to stop it? Like we were convinced uh, that somehow uh, going along with feminism where, where women are better than men. Again, feminism is that women believe they're better than men. They never wanted equality. They wanted superiority. And we, we as men somehow let that happen and became convinced. And that's not how, that's not how God set up this world. The man is head of the woman, as Christ is head of the church. It's really that simple. And real women of God, and I, and I contend real women in general, is what they want. It, it's it, As much as we want women in the way that we do, uh, they want men the same way we want them. And they want us to be leaders and protectors. And again, we can make every excuse in the book. I've done it as to, as to why we haven't succeeded at that. And there's a lot of good reasons for it. But I think one of the biggest things we've done wrong is what I'm talking about right now. And we kind of we kind of did that as an escape. I think, you know, like where it was, we didn't really know and, and maybe saw the, 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 the feminism taking over. Uh, the male role and maybe didn't know what to do about it and, and kind of kiss their ass right and, and thinking well maybe if we kiss their ass like they'll, they'll still think we're good and that's not what the real women wanted the real women wanted the men to say uh-uh it's not the society we want so I think a lot of things play into what happened there and I talked about a lot of that in my video about feminism uh, was it yesterday or the day before it's on my on my YouTube channel and on my website, avoidthemark.com slash podcast. A lot of good podcasts on there. I hope you guys check out. But um, we let it happen because uh, we gave up our power. And, and as silly as it may sound to some, I'm telling you it's not silly. 
porn and excessive masturbation uh, kind of leaves you like a shell. And you know what I mean. You know what I mean. You know how you feel after that's over. So I want to ask you today to take a hard look at what you've been doing in that realm. Be honest with yourself. Just deleting it off your phone is not enough of your past activity to hide from your wife or just to hide from your own shame. That's it's not enough. You, you need to stop. And it's not going to be easy. Um, you know, I personally with addiction, you know, I've battled with uh, nicotine since I was 13 or 14 years old. And I understand addiction and it is a, a monster, right? And I can't tell you in my life how many times I've quit and I've been successful at times. And, and then I turned to vaping and, and then, you know, a combination of the two and then back to vaping, you know, and then I'll quit everything for a while. And, and I, but it, it, so I understand the vice of it. I understand. Um, and I really think that it is a stronghold that only the spirit of God can break in your brain and kind of reset your brain and clear all those images in your head out of all the things that you, your brain has taken in. It's only the spirit that can purge that stuff and, and just make it so that you don't even remember it. And that is a possibility, man. The, the Holy Spirit is so powerful right now in this day. Um, I, I tell you, the things that the spirit of God is doing in my life right now, um, I wouldn't even begin to tell you. It's literally healing parts of my body that I didn't know needed to be healed. He's strengthening parts of my body that, that, uh, that I didn't realize how weak they were. And, and he's doing it in the spirit. It's, it's unbelievable, honestly. It, it, the, the power of God right now is uh, it's so tangible. It's like it's, like it's thick everywhere. And I know that power can destroy that stronghold of porn in your life. Because it, 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 I think before you get over that, there's nothing else. You can't serve God. You cannot serve God and watch other people have sex. Or worse, you know. Um, and, and I believe this is what God wants me to tell you. I'm not judging you at all. I totally understand the loneliness. I totally understand kind of the despair. Like, how am I going to meet a woman? How is this ever going to happen? Uh, I tell you, it will. And it can. If you redirect that energy, and the, the Bible says all things work together for the good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. So if you love God, you're automatically called according to his purpose, which means all things will work together for the good, all things. Getting rid of this addiction, getting rid of this stronghold is the first step to being able to go to God and say, God, I, I want you to, to match me, to pair me with, with, with my spiritual equal. And you'll be able then to approach that because he's going to bring it to you. I'm telling you, he's aligning people right now. He's really aligning his people that he wants together. He's, he's finding, he knows all of the prayers we've been sending to him, right? He knows exactly who's sending what and about what and who needs what and who needs this to get through this next time and in, in this next age that we're heading into right now. And so once you break that stronghold through the spirit and put your trust that God can, in fact, miraculously bring you somebody You know, you're just going to be stuck in a loop cycle, miserable loop cycle for the rest of your life, alone, old, pitiful, watching 25-year-old girls having sex on your phone. Is that what you want? Or do you want a partner, you know? Do you want a partner? Give yourself some time. Give yourself some space away from that. Just don't do it and start praying to God in the spirit and say break down this stronghold father let's let's pray let's pray right pray right now about this i think 
and, and, and see if we can get this process started because um, I know this is really, really important. Lord, I pray right now for your men and the evils that the enemy has perpetrated on us through this evil, evil, disgusting industry that has sucked in millions and millions of good, strong men. And I pray destruction on that entire industry. In the name of the Almighty Jesus, I pray destruction of that industry, that it fall to pieces. And more than that, I pray for your men that you send your spirit into their lives, into them, and destroy that stronghold that the enemy has installed into pieces. Destroy it into pieces. The power and majesty of your Holy Spirit, the purity and love. And Father, I pray not only that, but in the spirit, that those memories, those images, those things that have been taken into the mind through the eyes that are the works of the enemy be purged from every mind that's taken them in, completely purged and removed. As far as the east is from the west, and never be for, never be remembered again, either by you or by the one who took them in. And I pray, Father, that you continue to move in the way you have to align your people for what's to come and make it very obvious, Father, if you can, make it very obvious for us to know the answers of what we need to do and when we need to do them. In the name of my Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, I think I'm going to publish this, I think. <laughs> ah, man. It's, just, it's so ridiculously important to get this out of our lives, guys. Our women need us so bad. They really do. They need us. You might, tell, you might turn to your wife right now and you might say, Honey, do you need me? She'll say, No, I don't need you for anything. She's lying to you. She, what she's saying is, I don't think I can get anything out of you. That's what she's really saying. She's giving up hope. But that's not a reason for you to give up hope. It's a reason for you to start giving her hope. Right? Thank you for listening. I know this was kind of a rough one to talk about, but... Real life stuff is. So God bless you. Have a good rest of your Sunday. And we'll talk soon. Peace.